Okay, so we're back for part two, which is going to be presetting records and setting up the basic data. Here's my map. <laughs> it's a massive blob, as you can see here. It's getting quite huge. It's almost getting out of hand. Uh, but enough about that. Let's just close my map for now. And we will create a new map. If you're wondering, this thing on the left here is the library window. You can click this red button up at the top, and you can see the libraries. Uh, it's really useful, because you can go in here in the built-in, if you're wondering about something, say, I don't know, you want to do something with a unit, and you're not sure if the command exists, you can just go into unit here, and look around here, and you can see, like, kill unit. The code isn't here, because it's an uh, ancient code function. But you can see which unit, uh, which commands exist, and you can see if they're actions or if they're functions, and so on, events, and stuff like that. So it's a um, fairly useful tool. You can also create your own libraries. I've demonstrated that in another tutorial, so I'm not going to go through it now. Uh, if you're interested in that, see my uh, debugging tutorial. All right, so let's just create a new map. I don't care about the size or anything. Now my computer is, of course, very, very slow right now. Lovely. So, removing the starting triggers. I'm going to start by setting up some basic structure here. So we're going to have a... Um, Uh, library, unit library, or hero library, and uh, let's start with that one. New folder, variables. So Let's create a new record in here. This is going to hold our data about our heroes in our library. So I'll call it hero library um, data record. All right. So the first thing we I want is a name that I'm going to use for the name of the hero that I'll use on the button. So I'll make it a string. Uh, we need a unit type. unit type here, so we can create the unit, and uh, what else do we need? Uh, what else? Ah, well, we could store more stuff in here. I suppose this suffices for an example. So instead of having two, two arrays outside here now, one for name and one for unit type. Um, actually, I wanted to use a preset, so let's make a preset. I should probably have planned this out a bit, but who cares? What should we make a preset for? Mm. Uh, bloody hell. I'm not going to make it do anything, I think. Uh, spawn effect. Let's make a spawn effect library. Uh, preset basic. We will just spawn the unit or... Uh, run in left. It will come running in from the left side of the screen or whatever. Run in right, run in from the right side of the screen, that's fine. So, spawn effect. It's going to be a preset. And here I have to select the preset I created, hero library spawn effect. Alright, so that's my hero library. Now I need to create some function for it. So, I'm going to create a new um, folder. 
I'm simply gonna have get set method. I'll put it straight in the variable folder. You could put it outside if you prefer. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create an add hero. Uh, obviously, I also need a variable here because records cannot be accessed directly. They have to be in a variable like this. You go just create a variable and you set it to a record. Since I only have one record, it's automatically selected. Array, let's say we can have up to 10 heroes. Um, without a variable to reference to it, you cannot get the data out of this. It has to be in a variable. It doesn't have to be an array, but it has to be a variable. You can also not pass records as parameter functions, which is a bit annoying, but you can get around that. Name, um, unit type, spawn effect. Obviously, we need to set these to the correct values, so preset, spawn effect, unit type, and a string. Okay. Double check that everything is correct here. All right. Uh, I'm gonna need one more variable here. I'm gonna make a settings. Just oh, here's a cool thing I can show you. If you have a record and a variable set to this record, you can just copy them, then rename. So settings, and you'll see that this thing is all automatically pointing on the copy. This works with triggers as well. If you copy a trigger or an action that uses another action, if you copy both of them, every reference to the other action inside the, no, the action that uses it, will be updated to the copy, so which is quite nice. All right, so this is not going to be an array. This is going to be our settings. and. Uh, max library items, since they call it the library. This is going to be a default 10. You cannot make constants inside records, but um, anyway, this is never going to change. We're just going to use it here. Uh, we could also store the total added. It makes it a bit easier to add new ones. I'm going to make this um, one index list. I'm not going to use the zero element in this list. I'm just going to use from uh, one and up. So here, we're going to set temp hero number. And now we need to get the number for the zero. So I'm going to take arithmetic here and Oh, I forgot to rename this one. Settings. So we're going to go into the settings and find the member total heroes added, and we're going to add one to it. Like this. Then the first thing we're going to do inside this function is to check if we have more than maximum heroes. So we're going to take go into our settings.